Welcome back to the version 0.1 baseline protocol uh, uh, code, code walk. We're here with Kyle Thomas, and we are now into the last of our big sessions on uh, understanding the baseline protocol v0.1 uh, uh, implementation. Hey, Kyle. Kyle's going to walk us through. Hey, Kyle. Uh, we're going to walk through uh, our uh, the BRI1, that is the baseline reference implementation one code base. And specifically, we're going to go through the uh, base or the base example in that so that we can see how you put the, the uh, baseline protocol together. Baseline app or the uh, Alice and Bob app, I think we've called it before. Uh, the official naming of that is BRI1, and that's where you'll find it in the repo. So Kyle, why don't you take it away and show us, uh, show us how this works. Okay. Yep. In the baseline repo under examples, uh, BRI1. Uh, under examples, you see Radish 34 uh, and you see BRI1. Um, BRI1 now contains a directory called lib and a directory called base example. Uh, lib has a couple of, uh, of, of uh, directories in it uh, from uh, previous ERP um, connector demos, um, more on those later. Um, base example contains uh, what was formerly referred to as baseline app and the Alice and Bob demo. The, the baseline app uh, class, as previously discussed, is now called participant stack. And the reason is, this is Alice and Bob, right? That, 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 you know, so in this case, Alice and Bob are going to be setting up a work group, uh, doing you know, a, a simple no-op uh, 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 work step. And uh, yep. so this is kind of like hello world for, for yep. the baseline V01, right? So this is sort of like hello world if you wanted to make your own application you would, you could fork this and start building mm -hmm. your own real real implementation, right? Yep. If you do uh, so, that, if you if you fork it straight up, you're going to end up uh, building on on um, what's called the provide stack in the documentation, the BRI one implementation of uh, the core packages and the core interfaces um, provided right. by V zero point one. So this is a a, a point of view on use on, on baseline. Uh, each of the reference implementations, and that's why we number them, right? You, know, you have BRI1, BRI2, where uh, different, it's kind of like the, uh, the, ver the difference between a yellow paper and uh, GETH, right? GETH would be an implementation of the Ethereum yellow paper, or the Ethereum uh, protocol. So in this case, you have BRI1 is, is, is effectively, uh, Kyle, you, <clears throat> your uh, point of view about one way to implement the baseline pattern, correct? your tools and your components so uh, you're using various things it's a little opinionated in that like we you know it, it provides nats uh and the implementation of the core packaging uh and, and um, baseline spe spec essentially is um is provided by uh a couple of different containers that uh that exist in the provide stack that's Any where the standards work will, will come in in september right is we'll, we'll start to go all right what what about a messaging service must be there what must not be there? How you know? How would you not want to yeah. do messaging? So that yeah, would be we'll, all. We'll, we'll, we'll take a we'll take a look at this at this interface and we'll say, hey, how do we you know how do we really uh, you know you know create a standard around this? Like you know which which right. bits of this you know must, security requirements must must, must should etc. Um, okay, security cool. requirements absolutely. And, and, okay, uh, and but we're starting with Nats and uh, and and also this happens to be using. Um, uh, uh, Nethermind, right? As the client. Yeah, the, 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 the Nethermind client, yeah. client. You would have to yeah. add some code to your client, right? Some RPC calls. You'd have to implement the, the iBaseline RPC uh, interface uh, on the client, which. Um, which Nethermind has done, I think they're the first client that has done that, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, so, and the, yes, yeah, so you, you basically have this Docker Compose that. Um, uh, provides the, uh, the stack, the containers that you, that are, um, that you know that implement the uh, the core packaging, and it also provides another mind the another mind client. So you would, uh, if you know, if your code, if you decided to implement um, uh, in your client the uh, the iBaseline RPC inter interface, uh, you could um, you could you could use your own image uh, here. And if it if it was compliant, 
uh, with the baseline specs, it would just work. Terrific. And, and right. yeah, and, and, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. In fact, you know, the BRI one implementation is definitely centric to, to provides, uh, um, implementation, uh, management tools set, right. But a lot of, a lot of baseliners uh, are using that because it's easy. And, yeah, uh, provide was, provide was in the right place at the right time in terms of what, yeah. of what it, what we had on our, on our stack and how it matched with, with what the needs of the, of the baseline, uh, spec right. actually, actually is. Um, and but, so for that reason, but we should, we should say that strictly speaking, uh, uh folks could, could again, you know, make another reference implementation that didn't include that. Um, but, Absolutely. but, but you guys did such a great job on it. Thanks. For people that are implementing it, it's important to note that it's not, there's nothing about provide that, you know, nothing about baselining that requires provide. Let's I think the community owes yeah. your, you guys a, a debt of gratitude for, for putting this front and center and, and using your, your tool to uh, make it easy for us to baseline. So if, you know, for example, uh, if you wanted to um, say, uh, create another, create another app applicant before we get into the actual details of the application, um, if you wanted to create an, a, you know, an additional, um, uh, you know, app, if you wanted to create an additional uh, example or, or your own app, like your own implementation that's based on BRI one and how it uses the provide stack, uh, you know, you could basically call call it uh, uh, my app, and then it, with I'm in the it, within the uh, I'm in the uh, BRI one package. So now I'm in BRI one slash my app. I can then do uh, npm init, for example. Now I can do an npm install save base <laughs> that is provide baseline dash protocol slash API. For example, so now you're you're in you're not, that's 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 uh, a library from the core. Not in, I'm importing not a, I'm importing the core, the core. I'm importing a core package, a core code, right? Exactly. So now, if I if I wanted to uh, include um, the provide stack uh, as the, as the other base example does, I could copy the Docker compose file. Got it. And the, and the make file. Uh, so if I wanted to build a, a new a new example or a new demo or a new product project, I would uh, and I wanted to use provide then, you, then this is what you're walking yeah. us through. Yeah. So basically now we've got you know we we stood up this new project that you that's imported the baseline the baseline protocol um, the, the API package from the the o dot one release of the protocol mm -hmm. um, and I and I've um, uh, just copied over the uh, the Docker compose which uh, provides the, uh, the the implementation, uh, the, you know, the, the initial implementation of the, the various interfaces in O.1. And what if I wanted to use, say, my uh, my own messaging service or or a different uh, client? What, what what would I do now to to yes, to change that? Import the messaging package, in, you know, into your into your uh, application. Um, but prior to that, you want I, I should I should say, you know, my my own uh, my own uh, uh, blockchain or Ethereum client, right? So. So, like, if you wanted to use a different messaging client, the npm install, for example, the messaging package. Whatever, before, whatever that happens to be, got it. Before, before you, no, it's the messaging package in the, from the baseline protocol. However, okay. before you before you do that, uh, you know, you'll you'll actually want to contribute uh, a provider implementation. So, like Kafka, for example, or whatever that might be, you would add that provider to the core package, submit got a pull it. request. And then that would be included in a release of the messaging package, and then you would import that package and use it. Um, so, like basically, like we skipped a step here of actually writing the Kafka implementation of the iMessaging uh, the iMessaging service. But, no, that's um, very clear. Thank you. That's yeah. that makes sense. So you, um, so it, so a messaging now, service of, would want to would would add would contribute that new uh, yeah. that new code to the core, and yeah, then for, there, there, there would be a new a new provider. Code. Right. Yeah, a new provider would exist, and then a new, a new, like you would basically add that provider to the factory, and then you would use then you would use the factory in uh, in your in your in your new package to uh, makes total to sense. Package. Okay. Um, so, so then uh, now to the, the second question about the uh, the Ethereum client, if you you know uh, you would literally uh, it's just, it would be as simple as changing the Docker compose. Um, you know, uh, Nethermind is a partner of provides. Full disclosure. Yeah, they're a great client. Yeah, no, and they provide you know. commercial support as well. You know, for their clients, that's great. But if you wanted to, for example, implement um, uh, the I the I base like RPC interface, or, uh, box, yeah, yeah, Pegasus or wanted to. You know, yeah. you could just change the, the Docker compose file to include that compliant image. 
and that would just work. Yeah, compliance where yeah, the standard will will stipulate what compliance means and what, right. what, what a client must do to be baseline compliant, right? But and what uh, that what that means today is the is it the implementation of this interface, this I baseline RPC interface. That is so the current, any client that, that wants to be baseline uh, com, uh, compatible or, or capable uh, or Needs usable in, in a baseline implementation would want to implement this in the in in the client. Yeah, and, and the reason why it's just it, all you've got to do is, is uh, swap out the um, the image in the uh, Docker Compose is because the RPC JSON RPC, uh, you know, it, it's just okay. so it's just JSON RPC. So that's works. very clear. Thanks, Kyle. Why don't you walk us through what's going on with the base example? And this is kind of, as we yeah. said, this is kind of like hello world. Two-party baseline, uh, you know, an in-memory baseline uh, record. You have this participant stack now. It's really the stack for each participant yeah. to, uh, to yeah. deploy, right? So Alice needs to deploy yeah. this and Bob yeah. needs to deploy this, right? Each participant, Bob and Alice in this, in this example, has a, a, an instance of the participant stack. Each, uh, and, and if you look at the Docker Compose, you will see each, like you will see Alice's stack. After you see Alice's stack, you will see Bob and Bob's stack. And so each participant has a full running uh, set of containers um, that includes um, uh, the, the containers that are documented. Uh, this yeah. is an end-to-end -end, end -end test suite. Yeah, this is an end-to-end yeah. -end yeah. suite that, that illustrates how both parties are setting up, you know, the stack and, and you can see it all in one place. Uh, yeah. it, it, you know, and so that's sort of, uh, yes, the in production, you would set up your own participant stack. So what it does is it, it essentially creates a couple of users. Bob and Alice have actual users within uh, the IDENT container. Uh, and then the IDENT container is essentially the, um, you know, an implementation of the, uh, the registry, uh, the local registry interface. And uh, uh, essentially, like when, when you register uh, your, you know, your organization with IDENT, it automatically it uses Vault to <clears throat> sign transactions for you that end up putting your organization in the org registry contract on the blockchain. Once Alice and Bob have users and tokens uh, in IDENT, um, if, a, if a faucet is configured in the, on the, um, in, at runtime uh, using the, an environment variable called faucet, faucet, uh, faucet private key and faucet address are the two, the two environment variables. Um, if those are, are if those are uh, present at runtime, uh, faucet will be configured, which will basically uh, just subsidize all the all the all the gas on the on the network. So it um, should be said that this is this. So this whole demo, this whole example is is based on the assumption that you're using Robston as your test. Yeah, you could use other. You, you could so actually. So you're using you the Robston faucet, right? You you could use other networks very easily, but we we've chosen Robston because it most closely resembles the the, the public the, public you know, Ethereum uh, mainnet. So, so. That's uh, cool. Currently, we are using Robston, and um, and if if a faucet is configured properly, then you will uh, then Alice and Bob won't have to worry about having yeah. ether on the Robston testnet. They will just they will just the transactions will just be subsidized automatically. Right. And it should be pretty obvious for any developer to, what you need to do to change that. So that's fine. After the the faucets are configured. Uh, we we configure each participant. So Alice's participant is created, um, and we can look at that. Maybe there we go. So it's just a, there's just a utils direct uh, utils.ts and underneath the test package that uh, that you know allows us to to bootstrap a participant stack instance. And so uh, when they're when each is created, um, it's created with a flag called initiator. Uh, and this was done to uh, as a to work around the race condition uh, in the actual like syntax of uh, uh, of Mocha and how uh, those you know the, the the tests are actually you know interpreted. Um, if in, so that this means that we can instead of waiting to initiate uh, Alice like when we when we, when we invite her we we just initiate her with the uh, initiate we 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 bootstrap the the participants that her participants stack with the initiator set to false. And what that does. Is it just means that uh, that it's not going to automatically set up the work group. Um, that will be Bob's job. Bob's like the, the designated initiator in our example. Right. So, so it'd be pretty easy to swap them in this code just by switching who's who's got the truth. Yes. The truth. Now, now Alice is going to deploy the work group and invite Bob. And now, what if you uh, what if you uh, put accidentally put true in both of those cases? What would happen? 
uh, you would deploy, you would both, like Alice would set up a work group and like there would be two org registries on, you know, deployed to the block. Yeah, there'd be two, that, that's obvious. So once we've, uh, once we've bootstrapped the Bob stack and the, or the, the, the Bob and the Alice participant stack with Bob being designated as the initiator of the work group and Alice being basically like just having an instance, you know, set up, but what, you know, waiting for Bob, to, you know, to invite her, uh, the actual, um, uh, the actual tests are, you know, start, uh, start, start running. Um, and so we, what we're doing here is here, we can go ahead and kick that off. So if I run the, the NPM test, you know, you want to, you want to run an NPM install first, you want to run NPM install. And once that, once that's all good, you want to run, you want to run NPM test, but you want to run it with a couple of, you want to run it with those environment variables, um, uh, such that the, um, such that you know the the transactions will the faucet will be configured transactions will be subsidized and you will see them on the route all right so we're going to run that you're going to see the uh provide stack uh and the nethermind client start let's go ahead and uh do this so on the right you have the logs from the stack on the left you have the test suite you see that there's the Bob and Alice containers have started. Each one represents a participant stack instance uh, that we went through. Um, let's go ahead and do, do that. So what we see here is the, uh, the work group has been created in Bob's local registry. Hold on one second. Audio. Good for a minute. <clears throat> so what, what, we're, what we do now is we hurry up and wait for um, the, the, uh, the transactions, the deployment of the work group. So what we've done is we've created a work group in Bob's local registry and we've, we've authorized uh, uh, you know, a, a, bear to, a, bear author, a bear token to uh, interact with that local registry. And that is is affecting affecting the deployment of the org registry contract to the to the Robson testnet. Um, and let me pull up. This is a, a particularly big um, uh, deployment to the main to the main net, right? So this mm -hmm. uh, work steps are much smaller, but you know, setting up your initial work group is probably the biggest you know biggest load, right? Yeah. So what you see here, like one minute ago, we have a um, a subsidy transaction that was sent, like a point one ether subsidized transaction that was sent to um, to, to Bob, um, and Bob has is now you see this contract creation transaction that Bob is sitting. That's actually it's actually uh, the books that's deploying. Um, it's actually deploying a, uh, a contract that will. Uh, that's the org registry more or less that's being yep. you know that's being deployed. Which so is a um, RC 1820, right? In in our yeah yeah. So we, what you'll actually see is yeah this is actually um, uh, a, a, a contract that's going to deploy the ERC 1820. And so what you'll see is uh, some assertions happening over here around that the ERC 1820 re registry was deployed and that then the, the, um, the ERC 1820 org registry was deployed and then you'll, then it'll, it'll move on to the next part of the test. Shield um, contract also deployed. So not, not as part of this initial work group setup because the, um, you know, the, the evolution of the design here is that you may have more than, you're, you're, there's no coupling of, of the shield contract to the work group or the org registry at, at all. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so it's actually not deployed yet um, as part of this, you know, as part of this initial work group setup. Um, so it's deployed. I mean, this is kind of interesting, right? What you're going through right here, one could, some, you know, some Bob or some Alice out there could deploy this and promote it as the phone book for all baselining. We haven't done that. And so we haven't done that yet, at least. Um, yeah, but think, somebody could do that. Favorite. Absolutely. convince everybody to go on their org registry and what you basically have got is a big giant phone book right that you yeah. could use to create different work different work yep. groups right so you could create a different workflow or different workflows right for um with with different uh, participants but you've just got one big phone book for all the counterparties is yep, right? absolutely. And none, and none of those uh the addresses that are stored in that phone book are tied to any on-chain uh, work step executions. Right. Uh, there's no way for uh, there's no way for an AI looking at the mainnet's ledger or the events or such to figure out 
that yeah. Um, yeah, based on its design. And that's another that's another reason why the you know right. right. And that's another reason why the, this reference implementation is useful uh, because it follows that pattern very well. Um, so you see here, like we just asserted that the uh, ERC 1820 registry contract for the work was deployed, uh, and that that is something. Um, and so Alice would be represented here only by what uh, that by uh, the the key. It's not it's not their public key really. It's their it, so the, it's it's a it's a default it's a default uh, uh, Ethereum uh, public address that was created in the vault with you know by by vault. If you look in those these logs, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see that vault created a couple of. Uh, um, you, you'll see that, that you know a couple of things happen inside of the. Vault. You're not going to be signing. You're not going to be signing workflow steps with that, which means the, the that nobody's going to yeah. be able to figure out that you're the one yeah. signing the beginning <laughs> workflow step. The default K1 key pair right here that Bob was created for Bob right here. This is the this default K1 key pair. It you know the uh, the the public Ethereum address representation of that key pair is uh, is the is it, it becomes the primary key as you would consider like, you know, or as you think of, of that term in the context of like a, a traditional relational database, that, that becomes a primary key in the org registry contract for Bob Corp. That's probably uh, and, that, that, and that never signs people, transactions. But I think most developers understand what that's about. So yeah. It, yeah, but no transactions, you know, are ever, should ever be signed with that, uh, with that key or you will immediately be leaking, you know, identity information on the public blockchain. Right, because people um, could trade, so even if everyone, and that's another, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's and that's another thing that vault, the, our vault implementation provides is the ability to uh, prevent signing of transactions with certain keys, as well as uh, automatically increment um, uh, the account, like the the nonce essentially, or the account uh, index on uh, an HD wallet, for example. So that's another combining these two approaches uh, is a way to uh, eliminate your leaking of information in in the context of of the baseline protocol. Um, okay, I think that's pretty clear. So how are we doing okay, on so, this? <clears throat> yeah, so we're, we're chugging through. I mean, we're, you know, we, what we've got here is, um, uh, so we're, what we're, 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 asserting, we're asserting that these keys were created. We're asserting that, um, that we've deployed, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, so Bob, Bob deploys workflow privacy. So, say, um, say I'm Charlie, right? So I'm, I'm, I, I'm, once this is deployed, say I don't want to create a new, <clears throat> a new 1820. I want to yep. become part of the big phone book, right? Yeah. Well, here, here, well, I think I think that here's a good example of exactly how this would work, right? Bob has just invited Alice to uh, to the phone book. Uh, once Alice is invited to the phone book, uh, you know, Alice uh, basically gets an invitation. Um, you know, that looks. This is what the invite looks like. That. Uh, Alice receives after you like the JWT, you know, signed by Bob. Um, once you decode that JWT, this is what the invite looks like, and it, so it to, actually to, contains. To, so to a developer, this is effectively kind of like a Slack inviter. This is this is just like you could just drop this in an email, and mm -hmm. and Alice can click on the link, and if you have a, like some sort of handler for that, Alice can like just any anyone any citizen any citizen or or product owner or Anyone at the organization uh, could accept the invite, and the invite contains, um, you know, all, all of the uh, right. all of that the was, all of the all of the information you need to look up Bob in the org registry, as well as um, in this case, it actually shows it actually says, hey, which, where is the org registry? Um, and so now we can say, oh, there it is. Well, that's now, actually, what, that's, that's let's a, be clear: what what this doesn't do that you would want for a universal phone book is it does not, it's not doing any validation on whether or not you're putting naughty stuff right. or, you know, it's, or claiming that you're somebody that you're not. That, right, that's, right. A, that's a whole different kettle of fish, right? But yeah. more on that to come. Yeah, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of work going on in that area uh, for mm -hmm. making sure that you're, you have an attested and, and validated and uh, yeah. you're confident that you're dealing with the other, the right counterparty. Yeah. But yeah. in this case, you're just, yeah. Alice yeah. and Bob know each other and they're confident that they're dealing with each other, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, and so here, you know, here, here's what you're, you're seeing over here now. Uh, so like basically what we saw was um, Alice getting that, in, you know, an invite that looks like that, getting, uh, and basically, you know, accepting the invite, setting up her local instance of ident based on, uh, based on the, you know, based on the details she, she got over here. She was able to understand, oh, here's, here's how I connect to Bob. And Bob also um, 
has, has given, you know, given Alice a signed token that Alice can go look Bob's messaging endpoint up in the phone book, dial it up like point to point and connect. And so what you see here is, uh, um, you know, a connection where the baseline dot inbound NAT subject is, um, is explicitly allowed in the uh, signed bearer authorization token. Um, and so there's actually all, you know, there's enterprise grade security happening in this, you know, it, right, right here in, in terms of uh, uh, Alice presenting a, a, a signed token that Bob has issued for her. Al Alice can then pull down um, the state, like, like the off chain sync of, of what the work group looks like, store that in her local IDENT database or her, her local IDENT instance on, on, her, on her version, on her stack, her participant stack, and then uh, begin interacting with uh, the baseline protocol. Um, and you see here, like, uh, there's, here's a protocol message uh, that's being exchanged. Like, there's the B line, and, and, you know, B line protocol message being being passed around um, between between the parties. Uh, ex another exciting development will be um, uh, around when this is is actually implemented as um, like something that looks like uh, protocol buffers or, or similar. Um, and so we've gone through, you know, we've gone through the um, the test suite here. Uh, we, you know, uh, I'm going to say one other thing. Um, maybe that was it. So, we, oh, so basically, you know, here's here's where here's the assertions where Alice is is a local local participant stack has the proper references to all of the contracts that she needs to um, you know to interact with the, the baseline protocol, including um, you know the uh, that uh, an assertion that Alice has tracked um, the workgroup shield. In fact, or uh, that, that she has a, I'm sorry, has a reference to the local work, the, the work group shield and has tracked it and also Can you has- that um, a little bit just in case somebody doesn't have context on that? Yeah, so, so in, in, the, in the Ethereum client, this, um, this off-chain Merkle tree database, uh, it, you know, the, the I baseline RPC method uh, implementation allows you to call baseline track on a specific address. And so that's, that's basically asserting that Alice is now tracking that contract. Oh, um, that's and so that, yeah, yep. and so, so Alice is basically what this 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 set of um, this set of uh, tests is, is asserting is that Alice is ready, uh, you know, to interact with Bob. And then uh, this is asserting very similarly to how Bob, uh, you know, Alice has her set her her keys set up. Alice has uh, been registered in the org registry contract. You see how these uh, on chain um, these, these tests that are that are asynchronous and and are sort of uh, uh, non-deterministic in terms of Robston's actual current, you know, the current block time on Robston. Um, you'll see like a, you'll see like a red um, number of milliseconds that it took to uh, confirm the transaction actually had, had, uh, um, you know, uh, shown up on chain. Okay. Understood. And so now you're going to, yeah. So now you can basically uh, refer to the main net or, or to the client that, that everybody <laughs> is, is loaded up. Now the yep. question is, it, you know, a question comes to my mind that might be instructive for people. What if you want, didn't want to, what if you wanted to be sure that nobody that stumbled across this work group, uh, 1820, uh, could add themselves without permission, say? Yeah, so I, I don't think that's really a problem um, to have additional organizations in the registry contract. They're just spending their own oh, money. I, they're just, I get it. They're just I get it. Yeah. No, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is it, it, it I'm, I'm guessing it might be instructive to look mm -hmm. at what you know so i think the the implicit answer is there is there's really nothing in the code right now that would prevent somebody from doing that from adding themselves to the or to the phone book yeah if they if they if they knew where the phone book was you can add yourself to the phone, the phone book. book they could yeah. add themselves to the phone book the phone um, book is not the work the work group though or the, the phone book is not the, the workflow though um the workflow is not the yes but you could you could clutter up the 1820 with a bunch of uh of uh, yeah somebody. but but who so cares? Entries, I, I think right? that I don't think that's a it's problem. Not, it's, I'm, not, I'm not making a judgment. I'm just saying it's yeah, interesting, yeah. right? So yep. So it would be so one that's might. Almost, it's almost it's almost it's bad. almost better. It's almost better if there's more in there. Let's just load it up. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, you know everybody's gonna have different things that they're gonna want in their own application. So but I think well, that's well, an if, interesting if, thing if, to if, say. Uh, I think that's an interesting thing to say. What is uh, you know if you did want that. What would you wind up going and doing? And you know, we don't have to go into that, but it's an well, interesting. Well, well, just to add one more, one more thing to that, like you know, as this evolves and we and we you know identify a mainnet and like for example, if the Ethereum public blockchain is used for the phone book, you can see that being like a singleton, and you can see that becoming 
quite large uh, in terms of the number of people that are in that in that single uh, red, you know yeah. single contract. No, the the reason for my question is just to say, is to just clue in people to what places where they might do interesting additions yeah. or contributions to the code. Somebody might say. Yeah. Hey, you know what? The goal is a function that will that would prevent people from adding themselves without permission. So inside the org registry, uh, inside the contra core slash contract package, um, the org registry, um, the org registry contract exists in here. Um, you know, this would be this would be like where the, this is the phone book, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so you, you know, you could come in here and and uh, you could make make additions. Uh, uh, yeah, logical, you would, you would, yeah logical we're not going to go into it, but you could, yeah, yeah. You could you know, fairly yeah. straightforwardly, you could, you can you could contribute say, hey, right I'm there. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna set, to set this up so that people, that, so that somebody has to approve new additions. Yep. And so uh, one more, one more thing to note here, like in the, in the actual code of uh, the test suite um, is basically how there's a shared, you know, a shared context, a couple of, a couple of them actually. Uh, there's like a, a behave like a work group organization. So both Alice and Bob's participant um, uh, instance, like their participant stack instance, basically gets uh, gets evaluated here. And so, like that's that's where um, uh, that is where you see this running right here. So that's 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 basically exercising both of the participants. And then um, should behave like an initial work group organization. That that's um, that's the initiator. So Bob, that's that's Bob that's being being evaluated here. Uh, Bob's participants back and see that is, and then uh, should be like an invited work group organization that shared context is, is only is only Mr. Alice. So um, you see here when we when we um, most of the work happens in the, in the test suite around these two. Like when you're when we're actually extra like we're calling that into that shared context and passing in Bob Bob's participant stack and or when we, when we uh, uh, do the same for Alice, you know, and, and we're saying hey Alice should behave like she got invited. And you know, uh, Bob should behave like the initiator. And so, like that's when we, we talked earlier about you know, if you what if you changed the initiator, you know, and they had two initiators, how like how like you would know like something would break if if, if you know if uh, if you did that. 